Father, we love you, we praise you, we adore you, we acknowledge you as the creator of all. We thank you for creating us, for blessing our lives. We ask for your guidance in all that we do. Continue to show us the way, Father. Let this message settle on us. Let the Holy Spirit fill this room. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, today's message, I title it, Thank You for Your Service. Because we like people that serve others. We're all as proud of our military men and women. They go and they are trained and they give of themselves and their time and often give their lives to defend us, to help us, to keep us safe so that we can live in freedom. Some of them die. We like and honor our police officers who do the same thing here in our communities and in our states across our country, keeping us safe. They, they pick that profession and they volunteer for it and oftentimes or sometimes they can give of their own lives so that we can live in safety and freedom and not, and not be killed ourselves or suffer great injury. We go to our hospitals when we're sick and we have doctors that have studied many years of school and, and they have a calling to help other people, to try to save people from diseases, to try to make them well. We have nurses that I believe are actually the angels among us who go in those rooms and do things that I wouldn't want to do, but they do it because they love people and they want to give of their time, they want to help others, they want people to be happy and healthy and comfortable. We have nursing home workers, we have teachers, how about teachers that work with our kids? Now my kids were perfect, but some of yours probably aren't. <coughs> some of your kids probably cause trouble for teachers. But teachers do that every day, work with not like two or three kids, but 20 kids, 30 kids, day in and day out, and they, and, and, you know, and they do it voluntarily. Nobody made them do that. We have you know, men and women who give up time to, you know, to be coaches, to be youth leaders. We have people that give all the time in this country. And we always say, thank you for your service. And we mean it. And those are great things. But those are earthly things. Nothing wrong with them. They're going to save our life so we can live to 80 or 90, maybe to 100 and some, you know, like Meta. But those are earthly things. Those aren't buying us eternal life. Those are making our life better here on earth. But all of us here that know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're in a different army. We're in God's army. In today's readings, it's pretty clear what Jesus wanted his disciples, and not just those 11 men, well, he filled one of the 12, and not just the 500 that saw him, but everyone for all time who knows Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, becomes one of his disciples. And it seems to me, this is my opinion, is that the church, especially here in our country, has lost that message. I just see the churches with, that are filling up on Sundays, but empty the rest of the week. I see, I think there's people who are, who are supposed to be a disciple, who are going to work, and sitting with their co-workers and listening to their co-workers talk about things they shouldn't be talking about, talking about their lives, doing, doing things they shouldn't do, and saying nothing because they don't want to get involved. I think that the church is not preaching the message of being an active Christian, not just a Sunday Christian, not just a twice a week Christian. And this message that Jesus gives us today it's got to be pretty important because he was crucified, died, and buried. And when he came back and met with the disciples, he didn't say, hey, good to see you guys. How you doing? Hey, you know, you know he, this is the first thing he said to them. Go out in the world and make disciples of everyone. So not only is it the first thing he said when he rose from the dead, it's the last thing he said before he ascended. Now, we're fond of saying, you know, you know, what he said about the two greatest commandments, love God and love others. This is the last one he gave. Go out to his followers. Go out in the world and make disciples. He didn't say go out in the world 
and make just other Christians, get people to come to church with you on Sunday, go out and tell them it's a pretty good deal, but if they don't want to believe, that's okay. He said, go out and make disciples. Go out and make many me's of him and then of us, those that believe in him. Preach to them, he said. Preach to them. You don't have to be up here to preach. You don't have to be a pastor to preach. You don't have to have a degree to preach. You just have to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have the Holy Spirit, which is the power he talks about. When the power comes into you, the Holy Spirit, you are a disciple. Go out in the world and preach. He didn't say go out in the world and make Lutherans or make Catholics or make Methodists or make Baptists. He said make disciples, disciples for him and his father. It's fine to be a Lutheran. You're not going to find it in the Bible. I don't believe when we go to heaven there's going to be a line for Lutherans and Catholics and on and on. This is man-made what we have here. This is man-made. It's like all other churches are just man-made ideas. The idea in this book is make disciples for Christ, for God. And not just when it's convenient. Always. We're on duty all the time. I mean, Ron doesn't go on his day and say, well, I think I'll be on duty for a couple hours today. The rest of the time, I don't care what happens. But we're in God's army. We're on duty 24-7 for God. But it's not always easy to go and do that. I know. I'm not always good at it. I've been there, and I, you know, I'm sitting with coworkers, and they're talking about what they did on the weekend, and it's nothing in here, I can tell you that. And I just kind of go, you know. And, uh, but that's not what he wants. He wants us to be bold, to proclaim his message, to tell others about him. I mean, look at it this way. If I was, you know, or, 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 you know, or if anyone, if they invented the cure for cancer, would you want them to invent the cure for cancer and then say, well, I don't know, I mean, should I tell anybody or not? I think I'll just put it over here and, you know, I mean, people are dying right now and can't, for cancer, but I don't know, should I, should, I, should I run out and make a scene? I mean, you would want them to. If I invented that, I'd be giving everybody here who needs it. I'd be going to the hospitals, I'd be trying to get on TV, I'd be proclaiming it, I'd be shouting it on the corner down there. Cure for cancer. And that just gives us life here, here on earth. We're still going to die of old age. This is the cure for death. Death, eternal death, forever death. This is the cure. And so many of us are quiet about it. The churches are quiet about it. Where is the excitement? Where is the yelling and the shouting and all the proclaiming? From everybody, not just me, not just Emery, not just us, all of us that know Jesus Christ. If you know Jesus Christ, you are instructed to make disciples of everyone. Now, yes, we're not all going to go to Africa. That's, that's something that God decides. We're, we're, you know, but all of us can do it right here. Maybe you have a neighbor. Maybe you have a coworker. Maybe you have a student. Maybe you have a friend, a family member. It doesn't matter. Maybe you just see somebody on the street who looks like they're in trouble, and you stop and say, can I help you? And they say, hey, my life is in a, is in a total turmoil. That's your opening. That's your chance. Well, I can show you a way that will help your life. I want to go back to the Gospel in Matthew. I'm going to read it from here, but put it up on the screen if you can. I want to start in verse 19. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. Everyone, not just people in Grantsburg or the United States, or everyone, all nations. This is the first and last thing he said to his disciples. I mean, you would think he's, he knows his time is limited. He's with them. 
has a chance to talk to him, and this is what he told him. I would consider that he thought that was pretty important. Let's go to Timothy 4.2. Because here it gives us an idea of how he wants us to do it. It starts out, preach the word, proclaim it, like you have the cure for cancer. Or you have the cure for eternal death, you have eternal life right here. <coughs> preach it, proclaim it. Seem excited about it. And be ready in season and out of season. Sunday's not the only day to preach this word. It's not only when you're feeling good or when you're happy or when it's safe. If it was only when it's safe, Jesus' disciples, except for John, as far as we know, they all were killed, martyred, preaching this word. So they weren't waiting for, their, oh, it's the right time, I think we're going to be safe here. They preached it, proclaimed it, shouted it, and died for it. Thank you for your service, disciples. So in season and out of season, it says reprove. Do it in a kindly fashion. So what, so what you're saying is your life is kind of miserable right now. Well, I would like to take a, take a shot and show you a way to make it better. You know, make it appealing to them. Be kind. But rebuke. Don't say, well, it's okay. You keep living that way. Because society said it's okay and I don't want to be considered, you know, you know, racist or, you know, judgmental. Or, no. You have to stop doing what you're doing. That way of living is wrong. That's causing you a lot of your pain and suffering. Stop that behavior. And then exhort it. And I can show you a better way. Let's talk about Jesus. And, and how do you do it? Angry? No. Do you stand over him and shake your finger? No. With complete patience and teaching. I think all of us, in whatever job we have, have developed some kind of inner personal communication skills. Use those. I know law enforcement and in the prison system, I learned how to do a lot of those things to try to, try to de-escalate a situation. Talk to someone who was really ramped up, really in a bad way, violent, but try to talk to them in a way that you could bring them down. You didn't charge in and say, you better do what I say, because they're going to they're punch you right in the face. So you went in there and you tried to talk to them first. Same thing here, with patience and teaching. Their life is a mess, you know it. They know it. You don't have to tell them it's a mess. Come alongside of them and show them a better way to live. And give them the, the, the cure to death. Let them have eternal life. Look at some of the parables that you know, Jesus told. A good one for this is the Samaritan woman at the well. Look how Jesus approached her. Look how he talked to her. Even when she kind of pushed back a little bit, he just kept patiently, lovingly teaching her. And he says everywhere, even, even to Samaria, which Samaria was, Jews would go around Never going to Samaria. Samarians wouldn't come into Israel. It was like oil and water. Jesus says, even go there. Go there and teach. Go to Iran and teach. And, you know, you know, and I mean, some of us do. But we can do it right here. You can do it right in your office. You can do it right, right in your, in your you know, class you're taking yourself. You can do it to your, you know, you know, you know, with your neighbors. But preach it. Proclaim it. Teach it. And then if we look at Daniel from the Old Testament, and I just love this, and I'm not doing it for any reward, but look what God says. And those who are wise shall shine like brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness, there it is. And that's our job. We signed up for God's army. When we, when we accepted Jesus Christ, we volunteered. We said, we want to be in your army, God. 
And Jesus told the disciples what to do when he left. Make disciples. And those who turn many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. We're going to stand before Jesus someday. and He's going to give us an accounting of our life. Hopefully he's going to say to each one of us, you were a good and faithful servant. But wouldn't it be nice to have him quote Daniel 3 to us and tell us that we turn many to righteousness and that in his kingdom we shine like stars forever and ever? I just invite everybody here, everybody listening, to try it. It's not easy, but you can do it. Just, just use the verse today from 2 Timothy on, on the steps. And next time you feel that Holy Spirit nudging you towards somebody that's grumbling or talking about something they did and that they shouldn't have or whatever it is, just go like, are you sure, Father? All right, I'm going to try it. Hey, can I talk to you about something? And the worst they can say is, I don't want to hear it. That's fine. Jesus heard that. And he just went on to the next person, the next town, the next place. That's okay if they say no. But think about it. If they say yes, you've planted a seed to, to defeat death in that person. So let's try that this week and the next week and the week after. And let's just share the message. Go out and make disciples of all nations. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. <coughs> Father, you know our fear. Sometimes, sometimes we're shy. Sometimes we don't feel like we should get involved. Sometimes we think it's going to reflect badly on us, of our, you know, whatever situation might be. Father, guide us. Help us. We need your help in everything we do. We need your help in this. Give us the boldness. Give us the little shove, the little push towards the people you want us to do this with that need to hear the message, Father. Help us to go forth and make disciples of all nations, to proclaim it, to preach it to others, Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.